Hello, everyone, and happy Winter's Day. Welcome to Relics of War, episode number 30 for season number three. Hope you all are enjoying the winter festivities. Uh, I am Wash, going to be leading the charge today on our very action-packed, holy heck, there's a lot to talk about show. But, of course, uh, joining us today is Evie, who is nice and toasty in his room. How you doing, Evie? I'm... I want to take my shirt off, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. Okay. Other than that, I'm pretty good. Excellent, excellent. We are also joined again by Malkior. How you doing, Malkior? Pretty good. I'm not quite at the level of taking my shirt off, but it's pretty toasty down here in the south, which I am just fine with. And we are joined, of course, by Mr. Moneybags himself, who has made a crap ton of gold today. How are you doing, Grybach? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, it uh, it was a, a volatile market, but I had enough hoarded up that I still did okay so far. Excellent. But I'm wearing a sweatshirt because it's freezing here. Okay, good. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm super uh, cold. Suckers. I actually have a blanket on. You can't see it. Anyway, moving on. Um, okay, so we had a new patch drop today. Yay! Uh, but before we talk about the Winter's Day stuff, um, the Nightmare Aftermath. Did anybody see this coming? Did they... Kate, Kate predicted Kate it. did? Well, but she can't be here, so that doesn't count. But That's I honestly didn't, I didn't know what they were going to do. I thought they would just kind of let it peter off into nothingness. But they gave us a whole new story instance. Um all new events in Kessex Hills. I mean, have you guys had a chance to... Go ahead, Evie. Apparently, someone is actually naked and is not wearing a dress. What? Oh, wait. Casimir. I did not see this. <laughs> There's nothing to see, but apparently her dress is an illusion because she would not actually wear a dress into that tower. <laughs> She, she speaks in dialogue. She's like, who says, who says I'm wearing a dress? All that you see here is an illusion. Wow. Hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, um... That's a I, thing. I, uh, yeah. I got... I mean, I guess if you were a mesmer in, you know, real life, that would be a thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so definitely if you haven't got a chance in there, anyone over level 25 will automatically be ported into the, uh, the story instance. Um, I will say that um, as soon as you get teleported out, stick around the little camp area. There's actually some really cool dialogue between like uh, Brahm and Rox and uh, Marjorie and Casimir, and the, the four of them actually introduce themselves to each other. And there's kind of like this little romance between... Yes. Um, and, uh, no, 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 Marjorie. No. Uh, okay, yes, but there's also like two little quaggins having their own little date behind the tent. Oh, I must have missed those. <laughs> That's <laughs> the best of, one. Lots of cool little stuff in that area, so definitely check that out. Um, how do you guys like the the back slot that is rewarded for this? Did anybody check that out? It I looks it incredibly painful to use. <laughs> It's in my spine! Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna have to get screenshots. Like, the angle of it on, like, my character when I previewed it, it's just, it looks like a pinprick to the butt just waiting to happen. Yeah. But I think ArenaNet cool. is obsessed with butts because capes <laughs> and now this. <laughs> that is. Boom, shots fired. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the, you get a, basically it's an antitoxin injector that you can wear on your back. So now you can inject yourself with antitoxin. Um, and of course the tri uh, key chest is still going to be available in Keswick Hills. So if you've got keys, you can still use them. Though I don't know where it's located in Keswick Hills. Yeah, I was going to ask that because I got a key for finishing it, and I was like, where does it? Yeah, go did it now? just did it just kind of blow up out of the tower or something? Just. <laughs> Kind of like Indiana Jones in the refrigerator in the most recent movie. Oh, yeah. That didn't happen. That, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, yeah. I approve. I approve wholeheartedly. Um, okay, so Life Spartan is telling us it's around the ruins of the tower. I wanted to hop into Winter's Day stuff, so I'm like, eh, I'm not going to spend my time looking around for this. Peace out. 
jumping uh, puzzles. Sorry. Um, no, absolutely. So <laughs> that's, I guess, a perfect chance to uh, segue into Winter's Day. Winter's Day! Happy I love day. Winter's Day. I love Winter's Day so much. Um, so we have a lot of returning stuff, which, first off, I guess before we dive into it, um, Toy Apocalypse, Tix's Infinarium, Bell Choir, Snowbell Mayhem, and the Jumping Puzzle all make a return this year. How do you guys feel about them recycling that much content from last year? That's fine if they it's can have seasonal new content. content. I mean, if they can have new content to back it up, because you would expect some kind of new story. Nope. You expect <laughs> some kind of new activity or meaningful thing. Nope. Well, I mean, there kind of is. I mean, because they added Dolyak um, escorted. Quest. Yeah, the gold sinks! Yay! And gold sinks. And gold sinks. Um, That's essentially all that is. I mean, it's fun to throw snowballs at Skrit, but it's a gold and kick them. You get to kick I mean, the Skrit, per- too. That's also fun. I think it's I think it's okay because especially for Christmas, like uh, more so more so than Halloween. Uh, like Christmas is a time of year where a lot of people, or just in general, the December holidays, are a time where a lot of people don't have time to be gaming. And the stuff that the, yeah. that they're giving us again was really solid the first time around, and it's very fun. And both for from the perspective of like them having to be on like super on alert for maintaining it. Like I know that they develop it in advance, but if it's tried and true and like proven to work, they're not going to have as many problems to have to correct during it. So both for them to be able to take a break and for us to be able to have a patch that is you know, entertaining and different, even if we've already had it. Like, I don't I don't have any problem with that, personally. I think the one thing I was looking for, not, not like, new story, because they, then they would have to develop new content and maybe a new instance or something to go with it, and it's obvious in the way this has been released that they... I'm hearing... Good, feedback. Yeah, wonderful echo. Anyway, aside from that, I was maybe like a new Winter's Day activity. Belcar is fun, Snowball is fun, Jumping Puzzle is fun, but all we got in terms of new stuff was the Doliac Escort fundraiser events. And you can enter up as a party into the Toy Apocalypse now, so that's cool. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, so the jumping puzzle, uh, this is kind of a big feature for the patch. They actually have changed it slightly. Um, you can now be run at uh, run it at any time throughout. So you don't have to wait for like everyone to fail it before having to start it again. Um, or I guess for people to actually complete it before starting it again. Uh, and they actually added three unique paths. So you can go the um, quaggan path, which is the easiest but apparently is rather long. Um, you can go the ginger um, uh, gingerbread, which is the hardest. And what's the middle one? Snowman? I think. Snowman. Uh, yeah. Yeah, snowman. yeah. No, those three paths always existed, but they now did. they got they got like little peppermint sticks that, that adjoined them so you can choose which one you want to go on. Originally yeah. you were just plopped in. Yeah. And you kinda it was mm-hmm. random, you know, you get what you got. Um, but you get to choose this time and there's a midpoint now, too. Right before you jump to the um, presence, the, um, Tix is actually standing there, and you can do one of three things. You can either collect a reward right there. You can uh, take a present and get a bigger reward if you complete the puzzle, or he can actually save your spot there so that if you fail in the puzzle portion, in the uh, present portion, you'll be teleported right back to there to try again. It's kind of a nice... I think it, that's, that that's works a good pretty touch. Well. That's a great touch. Mm-hmm. Add a sense yeah. of choice to something that several people have already done, so it'll be new for them, and then it just adds more life and flavor to those who are seeing this for the first time. Yeah. Plus, it gives a nice breather, um, you know, because they replaced the regular time limit. I think that there was before. That's or, true. Yeah, there is yeah, they, no. They, time they changed limit it now. so there's. I mean, the time limit is your health because you're slowly dying, but they made it so that there's a breakpoint halfway through that you're completely safe on, 
and I and yep. that's nice. Yeah, especially given like comparing this to Mad King's Clock Tower, which <laughs> despite being crazy fun and awesome, some people will never complete just because they don't yeah. have the execution for it. Right, which is what's nice about um, like a path like the Quaggan path, where the snowflakes pretty much don't disappear. So as long as you can take your time and get the jumps, really? I mean, you'll still have this end portion. Um, you'll still have the end portion with the presence and things like that to kind of work, but you can at least save your your progress up to that point. Um, and just a quick, go ahead. Could, could, could you really take your time since you're constantly ticking away from frostbite? To an extent, I mean, but it's not as it's not as mandatory. As long as you're going forward, yeah. generally, you're okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a pretty long path, path, but it's... Yeah. Um, and just a quick tip for people. Um, with the, the present portion, don't wait for the blue presence to spawn. You can actually make the jump to that first row of disappearing presence, um, and it'll actually save you about five seconds or so, which is pretty necessary in that part. Yeah, that part's but, really hard now. Unless yeah, that part is very hard. Okay. Um, also, the presents have been updated, so you can get things like crafting recipes, uh, luck comes out of them, there's some new endless tonics, and the I'm willing to give Arena at my right hand because I really, really want this, the Ho-Ho-Tron Mini. Uh, I would rather give... I'd say I give my right hand, but then that's a hand I can't play with. Mouse with? Dang it. No, no, I'll give I'll give like my right foot or something for the unbreakable choir bell. Oh. I'd give my left pinky toe. Your left pinky toe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really need it. Interesting. Okay. So so lots of cool things. Um I've been getting like uh all kinds of charged um charge stones out of it. Um the Ascended crafting materials, so lots of good stuff in the presents. Um, and if you complete, you know, all I've gotten is ugly sweaters. Have you really? Lumps of coal mm -hmm. for you. This Evie day. has no luck. Um, if you nothing complete, new. <laughs> yeah, and if you complete the uh, meta achievement this year, you do get um, a choice of one of the toy miniatures. Or a giant stack of Winter's Day gifts if you happen to have them all already. Do the original toy Everlasting Tonics still exist, or can they be acquired this year? Yes. Okay. I'm glad I already got all mine. Yes. I'm gonna show those things off. I have the um, the doll and the toy soldier. I forgo. I've did not go for the mini pets last year when I found out I could get an everlasting tonic of each one of these suckers. Nice. So, along with this patch, I mean, there's obviously Winter's Day, lots of fun stuff to enjoy with that, but ArenaNet did do one of the things that they had promised, and they introduced new healing skills to the game. Now, Eric would like me to point out that they added seven new skills and basically forgot to do Necro. Shots fired! <laughs> so, uh, let's run through these real quick. I mean, what do you guys um, think? I mean, Malky, your, your main's an engineer, right? How's the engineer heal look? I mean, it's neat. It might work in a Berserker build where you're going to go down quickly, so you can ensure you take that the damage that'll be necessary to heal up the full amount on the AAD by reaching 1%. But it's a 40-second recharge. Ouch. If they chose to heal me 100% and it stayed at a 40-second recharge, I still wouldn't take it. No? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Even though, like, I ha usually have, like, unlimited vigor, they kind of nerfed that a little bit, but Engineer has very high vigor uptime. One immobilize, one CC, stun, whatever. You're right. 40 seconds. I hope you enjoy jumping around. That's a long time. Especially since you guys don't really have a whole lot of other means of healing. Nope. So, um, all right. What about how's What's the, the two build skill for it? Now the two build skill is it, it it is a stun. 
which is cool. It's awesome okay. to have I that it on was the a heal. Nope. Toolba is a stun for A D. Which is awesome to have that on a tool belt because then you can take tool belt related traits and stuff like that. Like I always mm -hmm. run fifteen in tools so I can get tool belt skills recharged at twenty five percent. So if I got to critical, then I can have a stun to pop someone and then get the heck out of dodge. Okay. How about the uh, thief heal, Evie? How's that one looking? Um, I did some quick napkin math with cleric's gear and venom share, residual venom, and so forth. The team heal for it would be equivalent to 20k. Wow. Which is pretty significant. Is that However, hot yourself in that? That is hot. So is that like is that five k um, per four yourself. members or four k per five members? No, that's twenty k per member. Per member. That's, oh, that's hot. Over over the course of thirty six seconds. Okay. Okay. That's still pretty so good, the heal per second of it is like four hundred and seventy something. It's. And the big part of it is it's a leech. It's not just a straight-up heal. So it's more damage. Nice. That is hot. It's, it's to the point where Venom Share is seeing a introduction again in PvP with Thieves Guild. I am it's okay very, with that. very powerful. Thieves kind of dropped off the map with this PvP. So if we see mm -hmm. more supporting Thieves or Thieves, People that aren't just one trick pony, heart seeker, or backstab and run. Yeah. Yeah, I considering that. the they basically have made sword bleh in PvP now because infiltrator's return is bleh. <laughs> I have no better word for it. Doesn't it still remove your CC? It, it has a cast. It has a cast time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Y'all needed that. <laughs> well, that, that was, was a I, laugh I, right there. That was a that I, was a, that was a two initiative freebie. I agree that it should have not broken stuns, but it should still move you, and it does not need a cast time. It is useless now. Or if they were going to remove it, they needed to do something else because that was literally like the main thing with sword is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, basically. Yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> whatever. Um, I mean, I so I don't really, I haven't really played Thief a ton. Um, I've been playing in World v. World this season, but uh, their their healing skill is one of the exceptions to uh, to something that I I saw in in several of the skills that they implemented here where I feel like a lot of them seem to be balanced, and, and we can talk about it with each skill and, like as we go, but a lot of them feel like if they're trying to add a team support element, a lot of them are balanced around everybody in the team bringing a team support element mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. the numbers are so effing low and the scaling is so bad on so many of them that it's like, Sure, I heal everybody a little bit, but it's vastly inferior to my own heal. So unless everybody else is doing that, I'm basically not doing anything, and I'm still dying. And the thief, the thief heal seems to be an exception to that, which I I really think like, the but... reason for that is because you have to completely trait for that sure. thief heal sure, to get but it. But you can, is the thing. Like mm -hmm. you can do that, and and having that kind of viability, even if you don't completely trait, like even just going off of their their like quickie version where they were healing a couple K per party member uh, in the well, live stream. Well, if you don't trait for it, you're not going to heal your party members. They, they traded some, though. Like, they, they weren't going Cleric Spill, I don't think, but they were going, you know, Venom Shares and, and uh, the extra hits. I mean, that's things that Venom Thieves already are going to take. You know what I mean? But that's basically trading for it, though. No, it's trading, but it's not geared. Venom share like, you can still is 30 full... points in one tree, and residual venom, uh, the residual venom, excuse me, is 30 points into another tree. True, that leaves but, uh, you with 10 points. But you don't have to. You can still do a fully damage focused uh, tr uh, gear set, is what I mean. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, like you have to trade for it, but trading for something's okay. But 
like you don't have to gear for it, or but you can gear for it, and mm-hmm. and that's that's a lot of support and it's interesting, but I don't think we're ever gonna get. I, I don't know, think we're ever gonna buy a traits... team that everybody brings a support. Everybody brings support mm-hmm. instead of doing everything else. Like that's that role's never gonna work. Like, or that that team comp is never gonna work. I don't think. So I like the thief one because it doesn't require the whole team to do something to be good. Especially because. It increases the damage other people do as well as being <laughs> yeah, supported. It's like it's the only one that does that. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I thought I thought it was just a heal. That's... I mean, it's a sm- it's a small increase, but it's there. But it is an so, increase. Yeah, it's an increase. So, so anything besides the <laughs> um, well, elementalist is very very weird. So if you can hit your maximum number of targets, it's fantastic. If you hit just your one, it's so it's kind of a maybe for PVE, probably it's... not for SPVP, godly and world v world. Yeah, it'll be fantastic for world v world with where you can pop it in the middle of a zerg and just. What's the range of it? Uh, it's not super remember. big from the live stream. Yeah. Judging on how many targets they didn't always hit all of, even though those golems were pretty clustered together. Because a lot of people were like, oh, no, what? No, DD Arcane be... might be making a comeback. Wouldn't Let's... it be limited by five targets? Two it, it will be. is the radius. It should be. Mm-hmm. But, if, but Worldly World is going to give you target saturation. Yeah. So that even though you can only yeah. hit five, it's going to be a lot easier to hit five. You know, in PvE settings where typically you tend to stack, like for bosses and things like that, it'll it'll be... Maybe a little bit better for when everything's grouped up like that, but it's going to be it's worthless in structured PvP. Um, and the radius on it is 240, so it's slightly bigger than melee. Yeah, it's. But, I uh, wouldn't say it's worthless in structured, but it's not as good as the other skills. No, no, it's not nearly as good. The nice thing about it, though, and this is I think where they kind of fulfilled their diversity aspect of it, is that it also is a blast finisher. So which means you might be able to take things like Arcane Wave off of your, or Arcane Blast off of your bar in favor of using this. But mm-hmm. I, it's, a, it's a gamble, really. You're gambling, do I need this heal right now, or would it be better to give myself a boon or something via a Blast? Um, I don't think a Blast Finisher is almost ever going to be worth losing your heal. In the sense that yeah. If you're it's, healing and you don't need to be healing, I don't think it's ever going to be a good trade. Waterfield You're bunkers. Here. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah, I was pretty much going nip, nip. Not gonna be worth it. Nope. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Grimlock, you want to talk about the <coughs> necro heal? Ouch. Yeah, uh, we can. I uh, here. Let me let me just look it's at bad. it real quick. Exactly. But to, okay. So like to me, this skill, and and I haven't run like a full vamp build to test it out. But my overall feeling on almost all of the vamp traits in general, but especially with this one, is that your opportunity cost for taking it or doing it is too high a lot of the time. Like, you've just got, uh, like, sure, it's neat, but the amount of healing or leeching that it gives you are so low compared to the, like, immense amount of extra damage you could take with other options or other traits or other skills um, that, you know, I... So so let's look at this here. The initial self heal is four thousand as compared to consume conditions, which is fifty four hundred. At uh, base consume, before any conditions. Yeah, base, which which uh yeah, yeah and it gives you an extra seven forty four per condition and gets all of your conditions gone. Yeah. Uh it's Still. a twenty five se- um consume conditions has twenty five second recharge, this has thirty five. So it's lower base heal, it doesn't do anything for conditions. It doesn't heal a ton extra for conditions, and it uh, and it loses its passive because we don't have one of those traits to keep your keep passive your when you've used your active, and it's got a 10 second longer cooldown. Uh, the life siphon effect is it deals 226, heals 436, which like if okay, so if it didn't have if it didn't have a one second uh, cooldown on it, it could maybe be interesting. I think maybe because that's because a lot of builds try and do a lot of damage in small in small procs to you. Mm-hmm. Um, like yeah. 
like hundred blades, you know, is hitting you a ton of times, or you know, th- thief skills or whatever. You know, well, not backstab, but you know, things any any kind of like flurrying skills can hit you for a lot of total damage, but a lot of number of hits. Yeah. But and even with the necro, there's dagger two and axe two, mm-hmm. which right. are some of the biggest DPS skills they have. So. Yep. Yeah, and so, but you, um, when, when you look at the, the damage packets that come in against you, and this is especially true in PvE, uh, I can't speak from the most experience in PvP, but I can kind of guess just from the damage that I can deal in PvE, like the damage packets you take in are running in the multiple thousands, and so a heal of 400 when you're taking multiple thousands, sometimes up to you know, five, six, seven K is, le- you know, 5%, 10%. I mean, if you just look at just protection and or regeneration, yeah. If you if you just look at protection and or regeneration, the boons that Necros basically don't have any access to, those are both better. And the worst thing is that the heal is only when you're already taking damage, which granted is somewhere that you want to be, but we're also really good, or I mean somewhere that you want to be as in your your fighting but we're a really good kiting class with uh in terms of like uh cc's like we're kiting and chasing we don't have good like long distance escapes but we're good at keeping you from getting into melee with us and usually if we start getting into melee we start taking it really bad because we don't have any disengages that are you know on low cooldown or or send us you know we don't have very many leaps we don't have any teleports we don't have any you know things like that so it's like you do nothing all during the time where you're at your strongest, i.e. when you're keeping them away from you, and then you reduce it less than protection. And yeah, sure, you're, you're, it's basically like giving yourself a really bad protection with kind of retaliation. I, yeah, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, well, and the fact that you're going to lose that passive when <laughs> you use it. So there yeah. goes the whole point of bringing that yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I will not be picking it up on my necro. I don't. Oh, sorry. I was even misreading it. The passive heal is only three forty-five, and it doesn't siphon. So it only siphons on the active, which it only siphons mm-hmm. to twenty-six for four thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other things that were, uh, of course, like guardians. Um, they got a new meditation. Um, Guardian one is so good. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of obvious. Like, it's cool that now they're saying damage guardians. We want to make them a thing. But it's like, so support tanky guardians can tank this also and still be effective. Yeah. So here's what this one does. You heal yourself, and then for a brief time, you heal yourself based on a percentage of damage dealt to enemies. Twenty percent. All kinds of damage. Yeah. Base so, damage, power damage, condi damage, retribution damage. Yeah. So you're basically this healing thing will be retaliation. Gone. Everything. This oh, thing it works gone. on retaliation too. Works on retaliation yes. too. This oh thing will be godly God. in worldly world. This thing will make me cry as an engineer, and I already cry a lot in worldly world. <laughs> when I throw grenades against retaliation. And to top it off, it's a meditation. So all those wonderful traits they have for meditations apply to the healing skill. So they get fury and all that wonderful stuff. My one gadget trait is completely... Holy crap, that was loud. (laughs) Thank you for the loudness. You're welcome. (laughs) That can be Um, edited. So speaking of other things that are completely overpowered, uh, Warriors Defiant Stance. <laughs> so they, heal yourself and then absorb all that. incoming damage for a period of time. All they okay. All they incoming damage. Recharge. Recharge. What's recharge? Uh, hold on. Let's see. What's the recharge on it? Quick to the wiki. To the wiki. I, I can't remember it being more than 30 seconds. 35 seconds. It was 30, they, 30 seconds. They needed that. Yeah. They really did need that. It was so hard for Warriors to close in compared to <laughs> a Guardian, unless you played, like, Bunker Warrior with Hammer. Yeah. But now the other, 
The other thing with this is that while the stance is active, uh, any incoming um, damage, like from retaliation, conditions, direct damage, yeah, they also heal the warrior. Well, it's it's like a wonky percentage thing. It doesn't really tell yeah. you. But I'm sure someone will figure it out by tomorrow, if not in a few hours. Right, yeah. But, <laughs> oh my gosh, running into the middle of a Zerg, 100 blades, popping this, and just standing there. <laughs> just like, what are you going to do? <laughs> I can totally I see it happening. Like, warriors won't... Whatever, yeah. We already so, know the warriors are godlike as it is, and this just kind of puts that even. This more. this secures that spot for them in World War World as well. Yeah, basically. So yeah, I'm curious I... to see how this will play out in, in structured PvP. If it'll even the be thing used. with structured in in really high end structured, because it has like the blue glow tell and they like yell whenever they yeah. do it. The at least in the top tier, they're not going to get a very good return for it. Yeah, mostly because those, I mean, these players are really twitchy. They're going to see it and oh, they're yeah, be like, yeah. Yeah, no, dodge I'm away and just... Yeah. yeah, it'll be fantastic for large It's the scale. same thing with the engineer one. They're going to see them pop it and they're just going to be like, nope. Engineer one is completely useless for top tier. Don't <laughs> even, <laughs> don't even kid me. Something that I found really frustrating about several of the um, skills in this is that, and and it's really a conundrum as to how they would solve it, but the fact that condition damage, uh, like procs, are, is fully converted on a bunch of these. So like, I get the idea for the necro and the or I mean the uh, the ng and the warrior being that there's supposed to be sort of some counterplay of like, oh, they pop their skill, I've got to stop attacking. But if you're a condition damage class. It's like, oh, you've got 15 stacks of bleed. I guess you're just going to heal all that, and I can't do anything about it. Yeah. And but, well, but on condition... the other hand, I don't know what you would do if it if it was immune to it. That would make it really bad. So. Well, there's a lot of I... there seems to be a lot of of condition interplay here too because of the the um, elementalists now have the diamond skin trait, which completely negates all conditions. <laughs> and you also have to realize that conditions are in a really powerful spot and structured yeah, right now. Yes. So anything that kind of downplays conditions, at least at this point, is probably a good thing. But what's frustrating is that it's... Uh, conditions in and of themselves are not necessarily too powerful. It's certain ways of applying them. Like, there mm -hmm. are lots of builds that could become like more interesting and more viable that aren't like quote unquote like the top tier that would use condition damage but wouldn't be using these traits or these skill combinations that are making yeah. the condition damage so powerful and it's frustrating to me to have those same things getting caught in the crossfire when they're not really the offenders here like um like my build that I use in World v. World I mean it's sort of a hybrid it's not support but it's a lot of like CC and Wells and stuff like that on a Necromancer, and it works really well, but it's not what people are complaining about for Necro, like, condition damage. It does condition damage, but I'm not doing, I'm not doing, like, the Doomfire Fear uh, um, uh, epidemic bomb that just blows a million people up with a million conditions, but... I'm getting hosed because they're like, oh, con I mean, it's like, oh, condition damage, well, we better just have like put roadblocks in there for that, as if there aren't enough in larger scale encounters. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it looks like you have a raging thought, Malkior. Well, if if someone, <laughs> I'm I'm on live and I got a makeover kit since there are new faces. We might get into this eventually. Oh. <laughs> and and so I clicked the thing to turn like the lighting off for my Savari in the preview screen to see my glow color and I was like oh, that looks amazing <laughs> okay. well let's finish up with the, uh, non the heels here yeah exactly let's finish up with the uh, heels here non sequitur yeah. um, so rangers get a water spirit which is actually pretty good it's not bad yeah um, so you summon a water spirit that grants nearby allies a chance to heal when attacking and then uh, petting the zoo gets another pet. Uh, <laughs> no, it's like yeah. you know, well, so petting funny zoo enough. isn't as bad as it used to be. So no, 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 it's still. 
I mean, it's not as bad as it was in Guild Wars 1, where you would have necros raising, like, hundreds and hundreds of minions. God, that was so fun. That was Thirsty so good. Or whatever. That was, that was pretty nice. It was, so it was so amazing before they put the cap in. and they put oh. the cap in. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I understand why they did. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so this is a decent, and, you know, then if you use its active ability, um, it heals yourself and causes your water spirit to heal everybody around you, so... Yeah, it'd be really nice if if necromancers could uh, use a have a minion that healed them that didn't die when they used it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that'd be neat. Or Don't wasn't a rangers have to yet. trade for that though? Keep or wishing. For, hmm? for what? Aqua search? No, like for it not to die. I don't know. I don't use this. I don't use. I don't play a ranger, so I don't know. Go go chat room. Mm. Figure it out for us. <laughs> I know, I don't play do, I know they pets, do have to use them no. exactly. to run around. I know that. I I don't know about the not dying on using their active. Um, I don't know. So um, the last one here for the mesmer signet of the ether. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what's going on with this one. It's like you either have these like amazingly bad, like they shouldn't exist skills, and then you have these other set of skills that are like just completely like over the top, beyond good, like So with this one, so the passive is you regenerate health based on the number of active illusions you control. Pretty dang pretty fantastic. What's the anybody know what the heal is on that? Uh, it's a, it's like a thousand every two or three seconds. If you have three. Passively. Uh, passively, passively, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So passively, yeah, it's nine seventy six. You know, un, without anything else at base, for and it's every three seconds. So that's pretty dang good. But the active ability, of course, is what really makes this shine because you heal yourself and recharge all phantasm skills, including yeah. utilities. Yep. All phantasm <laughs> skills. <laughs> All the yeah. phantasmal disenchanters everywhere. Oh my god. You lose your boons, and you lose your boons, and everyone loses their boons. Well, plus when you consider the fact that a lot of uh, phantasm skill, or phantasm builds don't like to use their shatters because yeah. they lose their phantasms, yep. mm -hmm. like, it, it gives some really good interplay there for, like, you know, phantasm, uh, non-weapon seal phantasm, weapon swap phantasm, do a bunch of damage, uh, shatter, know, shatter them for something, yeah. and then you know bring them back. And and when you consider the invulnerability that goes uh, like with number four, like the the inherent healing coupled with a lot of the uh, CC that you have just in general, CC and evades that you have with your different weapon skills and your utility skills, and then the fact that you can blow them up, become invincible, and get them all back. And oh, by the way, you've been regenerating, like regenerating. The whole time before yeah, that. a thousand <laughs> health a second. It's yeah, pretty good. Seconds. It's real good. I think. And, and and can I just spell. point out that I'm, I'm like trying to follow the theory crafting behind the new healing skills, and there are already three different theory crafted bunker builds for Mesmer. Oh my gosh. That I have just popped out of nowhere. I foresaw this coming. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, if, if people Phantasm are to get rid is of them... the yeah, Phantasm is the hottest build already for SPP mesmers. They were kind of mm -hmm. um, fizzling out thanks to the high Condi meta that existed. There wasn't much need for mesmer portals anymore. I mean, you might still see one mesmer on um, a high rank team just because mobility is everything. But they ran a Phantasm build that way they could survive. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. So, uh, also added with this patch is the new Ascended Armor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody, anybody? The the, the tier the tier is complete. Let's Yay. let's not let's not add another one, please. Oh dear God, no. Now can well, we get to the point where all the people that farm up for it get it? And in two months, they just like hand it out to everyone. Yes, Can we just please. skip ahead to that, please. Can uh, I start buying it with dungeon they tokens? Won't... <laughs> they won't hand it out, but I would not be surprised to see it becoming more available 
I, either I, either either through different pieces of content or just as they go into living story or whatever for 2014 because that's what occurred when we first saw the introduction of Ascended Rings to Fractals last year. Mm-hmm. It was here's Ascended Rings right there. right now it's only rings it's it's for this it's for this agony thing we got going on just just work with us guys and then it slowly became available through World v. World slowly became available through guild commendations slowly became available through other that's means it. like okay that's it and then we got weapons I was like here's these weapons for you to craft guys and then you could get it through to Quaddle. you can well, get them in fractals oh I mean the the chance is crap but just oh, well Tequadal has one stat type that's it okay okay you can get them through fractals like all the Elements are there slowly building, and I expect to see similar behavior for Ascended Armor come 2014. I want what? Ascended Armor and weapons to be available through guild accommodations. That's all I want. Oh, that would be fantastic. Oh, that'd be way too easy, though. Uh, like, how many? Not if it was a significant number. It's still time gated. You can still only get yeah, so many per gated. week. That's, oh, like, okay, and that's this true. is per character. You know, true. like you, you're. If we're talking, if we're talking about wanting to gear up more than one character, like it's never been hard to gear up one character, and it didn't used to be that hard to gear up alts. And it's really hard to gear up alts yeah. in ascended gear with all of the hard account wide like time gates on things. Uh, right, you can even... only do this once a week. You can only do this once a day, but you need to do it thirty times. You can only do this oh, once a day, but you need to do it ten or fifteen or twenty times. Like, there's there's so much of that already that even if it were on a an easy activity, it would still take you months to get six mm-hmm. pieces of armor for one character. You know, given the methods that we've had so far. Yeah. I would like to see them do something with a Mystic Forge where I can take my existing armor and upgrade that. Like, let, let me throw a stack of, you know, all those mats in there with one piece of my exotic gear. I have, I have some reason for us to have 100 copies of all these different Ascended Rings that we've gotten in Fractals over the oh, year. Oh, God, yeah. I, I don't have that problem because I don't fractal all that I, much, but I, I have guilty honestly, of bank tabs full of them. Oh my I gosh. honestly believe the only reason they haven't done that yet is this they don't have the time. Possibly, and that may be something that we see come twenty fourteen. It, as, it can't be mm. it can't I mean I, I know I should never say this when it comes to programming, but it can't be that hard to add a Mystic Forge recipe that takes in four ascended rings and gives you a random ascended ring or something. Like I don't know. Give, I don't give you something. Ran, uh, yeah, but Just don't say that. Why would I? Cause... Okay, Gray. Why would I care <laughs> to throw in four rings I don't care about to get another ring I don't care about? <laughs> yeah, that's because true. you can't do anything with the ones that have terrible stats. Like you, like if you just get a terrible stat at ascended ring, like I was saying, my guildies have like m- one or more bank tabs full of them and they're just hoping that they'll have something they can do with them other than vendor them for three silver. Something and will like, have to come out just because the yeah, idea well, of vendor yeah. for three silver is retarded. Well, right, that's what I'm saying. Like, though, like, throw at the them all in the forge and then you get to pick your stat. Why can't we salvage Whatever. them? Or, yeah, or salvage They're them. ascended materials. Just salvage yeah. them. Yeah. What that yeah, there's man there's said. a lot of things like that they that they could do that no I mystic like toilet be nonsense <laughs> no salvage them no mystic given, toilet given uh, that they've done that mystic for a lot of other things like adding yeah. new things with that to the mystic toilet oh uh, guy eighty one in the chat says that they are thinking about being able to salvage them that would be Sorry. great for my guildmates so long as we get more than. Bloodstone dust, <laughs> right? Yeah, be careful what you wish for. A chance, chance at globs of dark matter, and nah, I'm fantastic. sold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something else besides a common drop of bloodstone dust. Act, like, act, just give them the exotic, like the exotic loot table. Done. Like it doesn't even need to be that special. Just the exotic salvage table. Yeah. And add the ascended mat drops from fractals there. Done. 
Come on, Arena, that's just easy. So, speaking of salvaging, um, unless there's anything else you guys want to mention about uh, Ascended Gear. I don't think so. Yeah, as I say, it's good luck to all of you going for your Ascended Gear. I will see you in 2015 with my... I will say this. I will tell people this. This is both self-serving and true. I will... I will um, go ahead. You should be buying your mats right now if you haven't bought them yet, because a bunch of people, uh, myself included... Market is uh, flooded have a lot of material that they're selling and the market crashed overnight from things a lot of things lost half or are at half the value they were at yesterday and a lot of those things are cheaper than they were like a month ago and cuz i i've been tracking the things that i've been buying to save up for this and some of them are still like linen linen is still cheaper or about on par with where it was a month and a half ago and as more and more people get on to craft their ascended armor in the next few days, because this is only day one, uh, those prices are going to eventually go up. They're only going to go back up, and mm -hmm. this is this is probably if you don't already have them, this is probably your best time to buy materials. And it's self-serving because I haven't sold online yet. Yep. <laughs> Before yeah, we move I mean, on from the top, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Has anyone done a direct comparison? I, I guess. People don't have all the pieces of armor yet, but I'm sure there are people don't. that have it already. For freak's sake! All right, well, well you can good. Buy those, the time -gated those people, those people can do my my experiment. I saw what, two what, people. What, two what is the bit? What is the benefit? What is the stat differential between full exotic and full ascended? What kind of percentage increase are we talking about if you have the whole set? Because if it is less than 5%, I will not about getting it's, ascended ever. Across the board, stat-wise, just plain old stat-wise, it's 5%. However, ha! I called it. that does not translate into 5% more damage or 5% more berserker. whatever. Oh, that's only for them berserker crazies that go with the e crit damage. Even, even with clerics, it does not translate into 5% healing. That's true, Chief. Are you reaching like soft caps and things like that? Yes. But it's also more than 5% for Berserker because of that crit too. damage scaling. Crit, crit damage and damage scaling, yep. Yeah. Especially well, the ones I'm that a hybrid, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't really have any full circle Zerkers, so... Yeah. Apparently someone has already completed their full set of Heavy. The link's actually there in the chat, and wow, congratulations, mm -hmm. Nike. Yeah, and <laughs> medium was finished nice. uh, nice. by uh, Garyan, I think his name is, some European dude. The really impressive one is going to be cloth, because you couldn't craft any of those materials yeah. before. Yep. yep. So Nike's that the lose. guy that's been, that's been given a lot into the CDI for the Community Development Initiative. So, mm. congrats to him. Yeah. So, uh, gym store, speaking of all these salvage materials and things like that, so uh, so basically break out your wallets because they Rangers are added they're collection already, expansions. They're already broken. Done and done. What? It, it, oh, it, it, with that, what I was talking about? That was an insta-buy. Oh, yeah. yeah. So for $30, uh, $30, you can buy 1,000 items in your bank, basically. I haven't done that yet. I only went up to 750. Yeah, I'll so, so I'll wait for the last bit. 800 gems. Yeah. I'm 800 getting gems one expansion. on the sole premise that it affects the entire account. That's the only reason. Yes. I'm get yes. It exactly. And that's yes. why I will, as soon as payday comes, I will be buying it. Because um, yes, Ev, because it affects your collections, which is your account bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. it's great for me because I run into especially because I do every day I do a frost gorge gathering run on all my 80s because um, it doesn't take any time and that means that I'm stack capping in like at like at least once a week if not faster and it's annoying to have how many like, 80s I mean, do you have uh, only six almost <laughs> six. Oh my God. I, uh, only six we're at, we're, well, getting, I mean, we're getting close to a year and a half. Time. We're getting close to a year and a half, and I still only have one, baby. Hey, I just hit my for, fourth. For five of those 80s, 
uh, oh, no, sorry, four of those 80s, all that I did to level them up was Crap. basically just do my daily. No, do my daily. Daily. Really? Just do my daily, because doing a daily that's is how almost I an entire it. level. So if you just count the number of days in the past year, that's, you know, 360, 380 levels, basically. Wow. That's which, when you spread it across neat. 10 characters... Is it really that much experience? Because every wow. time you get one of the daily, achie- like, not the full achievement, the subparts, it gives you a, a chunk of your experience oh, bar that's, that's percentage-based. Yeah. And you do the thing, and then in doing it, you're doing things like gathering, doing events, killing champions, right, all that yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it... I mean, it's just... I mean, it only takes five or ten minutes in Queensdale to do your daily, and that's yeah. most of a level every day. Nice. So, it's... Fantastic. I'm consistent. <laughs> So, um, but back on the gem store. So, yeah, if you're if you're like probably everyone in the game and you don't have enough mat storage space, um, break out your wallet because yeah. or uh, eight hundred gold. Not no. Nah. Is it eight hundred? <laughs> is it really eight hundred gold? Is it like gem, a gem? One gem, gem for gold. I, now? I, for, I forgot to look at the gem exchange. It's pretty crazy. I will look right now. I mean, a, fr- a friend of mine was doing some napkin math, and I forget, like, the percentage ratio, he said gems have climbed, like, the, the gem oh, to gold e- exchange rate and vice versa. It's kind of almost 300%. It's only going to cost you, like, 250 huh? Since Since release. Yeah, okay. at all. But, but, but since release, like, the idea of it's been a steady increase since release, and of course we have periods where it wavers oh, yeah. based on holiday releases and things like that. But it, it kind of begs to wonder, what is the gem exchange rate going to be next year, or two years, or three years? I mean, yeah. it's it's fairly simple. Like Inflation it's, it's, is definitely a big thing in this game. Yeah. You've seen how much gold has been dumped into the market compared yep, to sure. the methods we had a year ago. Sure. But that's also, I think, a big part of why we have things like what's going on in Winter's Day. Where there's just it's just the thing is thing. it's the Winter's Day thing. There's there's no real reason to put your money into that. There's not achievements. Achievements. I hey I spent my three gold for it. Oh, that the, it? The, sure, I'll go burn some. Yeah, exactly. The that was my thing. That three gold. The people that be spending that gold aren't going to be doing it because they're yeah. the people that play the market. The gold sink needs to be within the trading post. Well, the people that are playing the market aren't actually introducing money into the economy. They're actually removing money from the economy every time they do it. That is 100% true because of trading post fees. Yeah, because you're just exchanging around goods that were already in the game. It It is – people – it's hard for people to see this because they're a little envious over the people that have thousands and thousands of gold. Those people are the lifeblood of the game. They are the gold sinks of the game. Because of their 15%. massive, their massive transactions on the trading posts. Imagine fifteen percent of a thousand gold. One fifty. If you One. listed twice because somebody undercuts you, you you get punished. Listing fee is brutal. It really is. <laughs> yeah, good times. No, it's great though. It's a it's a fantastic gold sink because it doesn't feel like a gold sink. Like, uh. You sell it, you get a bunch of money, and you don't feel like you're getting skimmed 15%. Like, obviously you see it uh, when it calculates it for you, but it doesn't feel like it because you're not directly paying it. You're just receiving a little bit less. Like, it's Mm -hmm. a, like, psychologically speaking, trading post fees are a fantastic gold sink, in my opinion. Because you never need to go on the trading post either. Like, that's the other thing is, I mean, it's not that waypoint fees are expensive, but, like, you need to waypoint basically, and... Like, if that were expensive, if that were a relevant gold sink, people would hate it because, like, I, I hated that in World of Warcraft when I was leveling up in a low level. Like, any of the move around things cost so much money, and it yeah. was just like, this is just killing me. And I would rather have it, you know, come out of my paycheck, but I'm doing what I wanted to do in the first place than, like, accidentally overspend and then not be able to do anything. Yeah. Ha! Huh. I just found, like, random Anet dev in, in SP. Awesome. Yeah, they pop in all the time. There's uh, a lot of devs on that thing. Yeah, so there are uh, some new faces that are available through the uh, cosmetic change. 
There are three faces for each race, and uh, yeah, you can make yourself look like uh, Logan if you want. Screw that! Screw that! Okay. Screw that! My Silvari uh, oh. looks badass. Okay. Speaking of Silvari, can I just point out that those faces look a lot like Florins from Starbound that released this past Tuesday? Uh, not like Tuesday, but a few days ago. I, I, I saw that and I was just like. Copyright it's infringement? Really co well, it's not copyright infringement because, you know, Silvari, one, were around first, and two, there's still distinct differences, but, like, it's similar, the yeah. similarities are, it's definitely there. Which I just found funny. Considering Starbound is, like, the highest selling game on Steam for the past week. Yeah. So if you're interested the in those... The ones have enormous eyes. It's kind of creepy. The which one? It's, the it's a very uncanny or... valley. It's like, very. Like, it yeah. looks like a uh, doll. How is this I new? I say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, now you can make your plant an anime character. <laughs> Without a nose. The noseless one is the creepiest. Those things are terrifying looking. Right. Some of the char ones look fan freaking tastic. It's Ritlock rocks and like cute Pebbles. cats. And, mm. I didn't think they were direct copies. I'm, I mean, yeah, okay, maybe at base they're direct copies, but then modify them a little bit. Fan well, yeah. freaking tastic. Yeah. So, a um, couple other things with the gym store real quick. Um, there's going to be a major change coming to the style tab. Basically, they're going to be retiring a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, all of the town clothes things. So, seven days left to get them while they're hot. Uh, and also, now through the 31st, um, you can send a gift and get a 40% discount for yourself on the same item. So, if you're in the spirit of giving, there you go. That is a great promotion. Yeah, it's a good promotion. So, uh, let's see. Oh, War season one of World v World has officially wrapped up. <laughs> and oh boy, I feel so sorry for everyone that did that. I I I, I, I want to say yeah, so I want to say I told you so, or I saw it coming, or serves you right. But I won't necessarily say serves you right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a uh, link in uh, in chat. Um, go watch this video, you know, it's, oh my gosh. It, it pretty much exemplified it it all that world, yeah, all that this was about. I mean, it's, it was bad. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> the problem, the problem that I see with it is that it's not just about the right now of rewarding people for what they've done. It's not just about you know, introducing money or not into the economy right now. Like, it. the problem is that in everything you do in life, and especially in a game, you're always subconsciously or consciously running the numbers on what mm -hmm. is the best value for your time. And mm -hmm. yep. if you do something that takes a hell of a long time, and some of those achievements were not long, some of them were incredibly long, and some of them were completely luck-dependent, depending on what your server is. Yeah. Um, like, if, if you have things that take a lot of effort, especially if you're on a server with queue times, uh, which I'm not, thankfully, but a lot of people in my guild are on Jade Quarry, and they have sometimes hour, multi-hour queues just to get into it, and then you're awarded with, like, the theoretical... Two blues and a green. Two blues and a green. I mean, I understand that there was a guaranteed rare that or whatever. Sucks uh, but, yeah, that sucks. And a lot of people are going to look at it, and they're going to be like... I came all the way out here, and all I got was this stupid two blues and a green. I participated I in World by World Season 1, and all I got was this stupid t-shirt. Yep. yep. And and the problem is not so much for the now. It's for Season it's 2 It's such a precedent. It's yeah. later. It's for Season 2, and that's World v. World. I, I feel like on the whole benefited a lot from Season 1, mm -hmm. from getting a lot of people in, getting a lot of people interested, myself included, especially with the change to World Ranks that they announced at the end. Yeah. Uh, is fantastic, but if if the rewards if they got everybody the in and then they're bad they, enough yeah, they're already, terrible. they're yeah. terrible, and yeah, that's it's... that's what's so frustrating. And, and like the finisher, 
I I think the finisher is. A That's joke. hilarious. Why wasn't okay. it permanent? See, right. I... Okay. So hold on, hold on. For the for those that don't know, so they as part of the rewards you get a Doliac finisher, and everybody and their mothers assume that this would be if a you're permanent... in the top three servers. Right. If you're a top three of your division. Right. And they as everyone assumed that this would be a permanent um, finisher. Nope. It's a stack of of finishers. And it's yeah. so weird. Now, I they, that swear is what to God, said it said. It be, I but... swear to God, it didn't say that. I'm not gonna be all conspiracy theorists like I know a lot of people are. It, but I swear to it. God, it didn't mention a stack. It did and not mention a stack. Mm-mm. It, the link to their article says it. I pulled it up, but yeah, that I swear to God, it didn't. That a is a stealth. Yeah. That is a stealth edit. I swear to God, it didn't. Like, and Google Cash. <laughs> I, I was going to find Google Cash, actually. Um, but yeah, that's bad. I, though I'm sorry, but like, it needs to be something that's permanent, and yep. you can just come up with a different finisher for every season. Like, yeah, right. How many seasons are there going to be a year? I don't think they're doing One, a back to back, so there's going to be a maybe two, yeah. even three. But like, I would, I'd come be, up I'd with have different to, finishers. If it was with different, everything else cosmetic. Right. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly because this is spread out so far. The only reason they couldn't have done it that way is just that season two is not even in concept yet, so they don't know what yep. they want. That is the only thing that would make sense because they could very easily say, all right, this year we'll do bronze, silver, and gold Dolmenac finishers. Next year we'll do bronze, silver, and gold kind of guild lord finishers. Next year we'll do bronze, silver, and gold whatever finishers. Hold the same kind of trend but pick a different model. The only reason they couldn't have done that is that it wasn't in the books. That's the yeah. only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, and, I but that's the, they were thinking there. And that's the worst thing is like I'll, I, I definitely will give them some slack on like this was a really good idea that has some issues that need to be resolved and I'm fine with that because everything, you know, beta is beta basically. You know, like every yeah. every first run of something is gonna need iteration, just like the living story. But when it's gonna take that long to do and the rewards suck, like that is disappointing. Yeah. No, they've had they they've had all the time to concept what do we want to reward for this season. What do we want to reward for next season? You know season? what it should have been? A piece of ascended gear. Because oh, the people shit. in world oh, yeah. world the people in world Heck v world. Yeah. I actually thought it might have they might have delayed the box that they were going to award us until the armor patch came out and then given us a one single piece of ascended armor to give people that taste of it because the oh, people yeah. in World v World have gotten really hosed on ascended gear overall and yeah they've introduced it to to the laurel vendors there but again that's an alt problem and like just in general like they they have a hard time getting that stuff and it is it is relevant there it is most relevant in that area of the game in my opinion because which is so funny because it's the most important like ascended armor matters the most in world v world because they have stats right. and it's competitive and yeah and it's competitive against and each other they have the least access to it right yeah. and so to, like in my books something that took a lot of if if not effort at uh to finish a lot of effort to coordinate and time to put in like I I got a lot of the achievements pretty fast and I got pretty lucky on some of them and it still took me like 40 hours Oof. like I can get 40 hours in 40 hours I can get multiple pieces of ascended equipment and yeah. like world v world people doing 40 hours they're not getting jack squat and I feel so bad for them because every time it's been mentioned on the forums like the world v world hardcore people are like, of course we got crap. That's what we get in world v world. And I'm like, oh god, that's so, like it's so like it's like that's. I mean, it's good I guess that they're not up in arms about it, but it's it's frustrating. They should be. They, they should, should be. be. No, they absolutely yeah. should be. They have every right. Yep. It, yeah, it just seems like a huge a huge if, uh, waste missed of if, opportunity. If there was a meta, or no, go ahead. No, 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 that was it. It was just a huge missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Okay. If there was, like, this huge three-month-long meta for, let's say, they introduce raids of all things to the PvE environment, and you finished this meta, and it took you two months to finish it, and you got what they're getting, the PvE people oh, would, we be would be raising Kane right about now. 
yeah, mm -hmm. player base P gone. PVE we people be gone. raise Kane anyway. Yeah. It takes me. It takes me ten minutes to get the number of rares I got out of that chest. It, flat out, that's it. Like ten minutes. And the thing with the there was some stuff in the show notes about you know uh, like what you expect or what's commensurately equivalent to other things that we've gotten in metas. And the answer that we've gotten in other metas is a permanent unique skin and skins that are unique that dropped that are not that. And as tired as we all are of back pieces. It's still friggin' cool that I have my Flaming Mad King's memoirs and nobody yep. can get that anymore. Yep. And the a mini pet is not of that level. So to not get anything permanent to that some is part people, of your character... To some people it is. To some people it is, but, very but few. compared to just the fact that, like... Yeah. I mean, you got nothing statistical. You got nothing to show for it permanently. Other, other than a mini pet is, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like a that is place. disappointing. I was really surprised they weren't given at least some kind of title. Yeah, I'm not. Well, they did give a title. There's for participating. Screw yeah. that. Do you want to say I won, bitches? Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not. I'm not angry because I expected it too. I expected two blues and a green also. That but sucks. I'm, I'm sad. <laughs> that like, lots of people expected it. So Colin Johansson also posted up an official blog post this week um, talking about the Living Story 2013 in review. I have to apologize. Yeah, well, to Colin, this is not the technical use of what review means. This is a <laughs> what are we going for 2014. This is not a what did we learn and what did we do wrong in 2013. Pretty much. I'm sorry. Yeah, this, not the this, correct use of this the word was, review, which really this was his me. his attempt to cover up. It's like there are some elements that we said in July were on the table, or we had development on, la la la, that got pushed back, and we couldn't meet in time for 2013. Don't worry, it's on our list for the first quarter of 2014. Yeah. So basically, what the article states is that there are four more uh, living story patches to conclude the Scarlet story arc. Thank you, Ouch, Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. It can finally be over. It can finally be over. Um, so basically, um, the March 4th patch will be the last, uh, last update for Scarlet, where we can finally, I hope, bury a stake in that chick's heart. Heck yes, please. Um, I told everyone <laughs> it was going to be March. So we I still feel gotta... so vindicated right now. We still gotta. We still. We still have to endure for two months. Yeah. Um, at least so they said they're after... gonna. At least they said they're gonna answer some questions instead of let's throw all of these vague things with absolutely no guidance out there. Yeah. Only recently has there been a kind of a uh, with the do not touch objects that she's trying to connect ley lines or look, looking for something. I mean, I think players. And that's only are because there are people that now. know the background. Yeah, people that know the lore and dug impossibly deep to. Th this none of this is even confirmed. They're kind of going completely on assumption. But you know what? Honestly, going with what the player base has found, I am actually okay with Scarlet's storyline. I'm not okay with Arena Nuts telling of Scarlet's storyline, but I'm okay mm -hmm. with her storyline as far as if that's what it actually turns out to be. I've, have you guys uh, all watched that, that Wooden Potatoes video where he's yep. talking about why he doesn't hate Scarlet? He thinks that she's basically more like a symptom of the storytelling problems rather than... The, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think yes. that, that really sums it up is, like, I actually like Scarlet in, uh, like, like her background character, and oh, yeah. I think her story is going to pan out to be interesting, but I, but I think way people are... I think people need to understand that the problems that we have are not with Scarlet. They're with how the storytelling's been delivered, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, whoever was the face of that was probably going to be hated anyway. So, oh yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Knowing that Scarlet's end is the, coming, the storytelling. It, it could have been naked like, Casimir, and it still would have been hated. One, one. Whoa. The, the... I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Uh, 
the star you're saying, Melchior. Uh, the delivery has not been the best. But along with that, it's because they don't have the systems to deliver it in such a fashion. The way we have to track Living Story is achievements. That's you it. You know what, though? Okay, look at that final cutscene for um, the Nightmare Tower. That's, that was fantastic. You can do so much storytelling with those. But they're not. They're not properly utilizing that as a as a storytelling methodology, and I understand. You, that... you imagine if they had cutscenes like the one what, for Rifles? Oh, what for storytelling? Yes. Yeah. Um, storytelling. You want to use the the giant final cutscene of the tower collapse with voice acting and stuff, kind of detailing things. Having not seen it myself, I, I'm just asking. What Sorry. what was it? The what tower was the, the tower the collapse? You said apparently there's some final did, big collapse. Did you, oh, it is, did you watch the fractal like epic. promo trailer that came out? Yes, of, that is fantastic. It was it's like that. that. It's like that. Okay. You basically, you get to see you know you inject the final thing into the into the tower, which apparently is a living organism. It's both. Um, mm -hmm. but it uh it explodes, and I mean you get to see I mean crap is raining down everywhere and. You get to see crate getting crushed under the debris, and I mean, it is it is an epic, epic. Yeah, it's an epic cutscene. If you haven't seen it, man, you gotta go run. It takes like ten minutes of that. Just All right, I'm just I'm busy with um, Winter's Day. No, no, I totally understand. Um, they also did announce though with this um this review that uh they will be doing specifically a features only patch after they finish up with Scarlet Storyline. There will be no living story. There will be no nothing. It will be literally just feature implementation. Precursor graphic. I have to wonder, well, Miss. obviously that. I have to wonder, I like, for it to be just a patch of features, how many features are they sticking into this hey, patch? Oh, it's because not I have a feeling... Many. It's not how many. Well, it's it's the weight how of said. Of, yeah, it's the weight. Be, that's what I mean. Edge yeah. of the miss. I'm I'm it I'm like be. I'm I'm involved in like the edge of the miss public testing and everything I've been seeing. Like there, a lot more people are starting to appear in the map. They are ramping this thing up quickly. I'm gonna tell you why it's not gonna be edge of the miss. It because me. edge of the miss is gonna have a living story component. Oh. Oh my gosh! I, you bite I, your tongue, sir. You bite your tongue. Yes, you do bite it. I uh, do bite I my tongue be... at you, sir. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be permanent, like obviously. Yeah. But... I think uh, the structured PvP rewards will be a part of that March twenty or March eighteenth update or whenever it is. Um, but I mean, other than that, I mean, we haven't heard any other significant major feature. Finish up precursor crafting. I mean, they said they were gonna do it. Maybe. So one major. I don't. Know. Eh, eh. Also, Interesting. I mean, there's all sorts of things that that they can work on. I mean. Oh knows? yeah. So they maybe just haven't told us about. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. So uh, also this uh, last Friday, uh, uh, the ArenaNet PvP team took up their very first episode of their new. I guess I could call it a podcast, kind of, but it's already up. It's a it's show. A, it's a show. Yeah, it's it's them, the devs, talking about structured PvP. Um, by the way, use your glory boosters now, because they will be removed. All two hundred of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, yeah. I mean, they haven't said specifically when glory is going to be going away, but it's going to be a while. I have it, to. Think. I, I think I mean, it is going to be a while. It. But the idea that they're saying use them now is just because people are sitting on hundreds of glory hundreds boosters. And hundreds and hundreds of them, yeah. I got 11. So. Just checked. <laughs> 11? <laughs> I think I've got like 12 or 13, but yeah, I don't... I had 11 in the first month of release. <laughs> Something like that. Wow. I think I have at least 50. I haven't PvP'd as much as other people. I'm, I only played in specified tournaments, but I'll be doing a lot more hot joy. So they did state, I mean, a lot of this episode that they talked was about uh, ranks. 
Um, ranks are actually <laughs> going to remain in the game. But yeah, they, that was a great I'm not surprise. Feedback. They had originally well, they had originally stated that they were going to be removing them, that they were going to retire and go away, and now they they make this they make this giant kind of blog post saying, "All right, we we've laid it down. We've gone through all of our business meetings, all of our requirements, all of our plans. We're decided we're removing ranks." Uh, they take a couple days of community kind of reactions, feedback, and it's like. Yeah. No, I don't even say feedback. This is just like gut reactions. Oh my god, what are you doing? And then, hey guys, we decided to cut back on that. Yeah. I think a large part of it is the armor exclusivity thing. And then, because that was a huge part of the reaction. Yep. And then finally there was a dev response, oh, it's going to be locked by ranks. And now they're saying that yeah. ranks aren't going away. I think that's literally the reason why. Yeah. Um, so they also have announced that um, basically if you're doing a solo arena, you're going to gain rank three times as fast. If you're doing team arena, you'll gain it five times as fast. So that, that, I, That's why I want to get a uh, 5v5. Wow, that, yeah. was my, that was my southern coming out of me. That's why, <laughs> that's why I want to get another 5v5 team, and let's go. Yeah, just farm the crap out of that. Um, also, they added the vision, uh, so that you'll be able to buy um, those level up tomes. Um, right now, to get to level 80 is going to be 160,000 glory and 16 gold. That's really cheap. That seems very cheap. Uh huh. I mean, yeah. the glory is kind of writing that. Oh, that's a good level, but like 16 gold. 16. Considering gold, that's nothing. The cap for Team arenas per day is 15. Yeah. Which, granted, you have to do a lot of team arena to get that 15 because it's 30 silver per match. But yeah. still, it's just like. Yeah, it's like yeah. 51. They really want to put people either world to world, which is what I'm really guessing they want them to stick yeah. them into, and like kind of disperse them into PvE as well. Which doesn't surprise me because that's where they make their money. Um, custom arenas are going to award 15 silver per win, 10 silver for a loss, with a 5 gold daily cap. Uh, someone is asking if this is going to be farmable cheesing, basically. Oh, that um, was me. <laughs> You're a yeah. cheese. That's probably why, That's probably why there's that a 5 cap. gold cap. Yeah. That's also why, like, custom arenas give next to nothing if you can, like, That's just... Hot. To get to five gold. Yeah, I well, I, I think I heard that um, from from a guildie that there are certain time restrictions before it counts for getting the minimum reward. Mm. Because that was my my thought on it. it was not so much that it would take a long time as much as set the match as short as possible for as easy a win condition as possible. Yep. It's sure, least... it's only five gold at ten apiece, but if you can do one in a couple min like in a minute or two, like it, like you know. It's at uh, least it's, it's at least like seven minutes. no it's seven minutes I believe from what I heard from a friend really yeah. yeah it has to be yeah so yeah so that was that was sort of my just my initial sort of gut question was like how how low can you dial that down to get that minimum reward and would that yeah. end up be able to be a farmable cheese method and it sounds well like not even farmable the, the reason they said they made it low. Which, when I heard gold was coming to PvP rewards, I immediately thought of this. Botting. You can oh, get yeah. an entire team of bots into a custom arena. It doesn't matter who wins or loses because all 20 of your bots are making gold for you. Right. Yeah. And there very well may be somebody that does that and just has it sitting there 24 hours a day, but... They'll probably get caught still... under a password. Will they? Exactly. Will they? They are in an instance where no one can monitor them. No one can monitor them except Arena Net. Except they Arena. still have all of the yeah. things. Like you're, you're always in an instance in Guild Wars. Like if they notice that somebody's spinning up, uh, spinning up a custom room, and just spinning it up Constantly. and like as soon as they're done, they just go back in. Like you could make a bot that's smart enough to make it look like a human, but that would be a hell of a lot more effort. Like, and if you're gonna do that, there's other ways to do it. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. 
get the, AI the bots bones. to have actual matches. The bare bones. <laughs> yeah. The bare bones kind of bot where you would just sit there and basically just keep auto joining over and over again, especially if you set up your own custom arena, yeah. would be. Uh, I mean, they'll you know, catch You'd that. be doing an infinitely repeating behavior that yeah. would be spinning up a spinning up an instance, the same kind of instance over and over and over again, spending the same amount of time to do it over and over and over again, and basically doing nothing over yeah. and over and over again. I mean, they have logs on that kind of stuff. Over and over and over. So, okay. uh, kind of to wrap things up here, we've got one couple more topics to, to discuss. Um, number one, the uh, CDI, the Community uh, Driven Initiative, um, the commander results are finally in. Um, they announced some uh, additional things that they're going to be working on, such as commander visibility. So, giving commanders um, the ability to kind of set their own color and shape of the tag. Um, tie that into uh, functionality or rank. Um, they're going to be adding squads to the LFG system, which that's beautiful. That will be huge for World of World. Um, they'll be adding uh, things like commanders being able to see supply um, that their squad is carrying, which will be fantastic. Um, create sub roles within a squad. Um, now, did they did they confirm? Hey, we'll, we'll we'll look into these things. Or, yeah, we like this idea. We'll we'll go ahead and start work on this one right away. I don't it was think more it really of a, these are good ideas, ever. but these are the they didn't really confirm anything. Yeah. Okay. They definitely talked about like the scope of types of changes that are basically never going to happen mm -hmm. versus ones that yeah. could be accommodated, and I think. I think a lot of those types of ones are in the scope of possibility. I mean, <laughs> yeah. once again, you should never say how hard could it be, but how hard could it be oh, to yeah. make it toggle well, to change your Going on the idea right. of, of stuff that would be out of scope, because I saw a, a lot of it being posted oh, yeah. amongst those threads. It and it's people... really poorly thought out. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, there were people who were saying, oh, the squad should be the size of the entire map, or the map cap limit. And then they're say, and then they're saying, um, no. With that, they're saying, oh, also it needs to have like a raid-like UI. Like, wow, that way I can see all 100 people's names on the map. And I'm like, let me write up an, an interface for you like that and show you how that would cover up half of your screen. Yeah, that would. No. Well, well even beyond wow, that, they're just not going to wow. do it. With 40, 40 man raids was insane. Um. I honestly don't see I healed 40 man raids at one point and like I'm sorry just no it's so many people to concentrate on I honestly do not see squads extending beyond 30 people at the absolute max right now we're already on 20 they might increase that just a little bit oh, but anything really beyond I, I really one. doubt it anything beyond that whoever ArenaNet's UI programmer is is going to be like cursing up a storm at the well, amount of what? work he's going to have to do. Yes, pretty much that. Yeah. Cuz it's hard uh, enough to make like functional because the UI is something you always look at. It has to be appealing to pretty much every player that looks at it. Well, it has to fit within their mm -hmm. art style. It has, it has to, also to fit within functional. their art style. It has to be functional. It has to um, meet the appeal of just about every single person that looks at it. And then to do that with the idea of a raid UI, that it is scalable based on the number of players in the squad, that is not easy to develop. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, these are just obviously some of the things that came out of it. Um, honestly, if they just did what's on this list, I think it would be some very good improvements. Mm -hmm. um, they did talk oh, yeah. about changing it from... Uh, um, a, from a character bound to account bound, as far as commander tag goes, which that, that would be, should be. That's That'd so be how it should be. Um, yeah, I mean, they also talked about um, the current hundred gold gate is not a very clean way of uh, gate. I, 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 I went. I went very in detail on a specific post as to adding new gates, whether it be by World v. World rank, which I didn't like because that's essentially just a time system, yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to something similar to what we saw with the World v. World meta achievements. Complete X number of 
events, capture X number of towers, capture Y number of keeps, take Z number of ruins, then you get the assaulter commander. Yeah. That way it ties into your, like, I won't say achievement because we just use that word, your success rate. Yeah. So um, the next um, CDI that's going to be coming up starting tomorrow will be about uh, vertical and horizontal progression. Oh, this one's going to get ugly. This, this could is, be bad. This one's going to get really ugly. So if you have po a constructive feedback and can do so in a non-trollish manner, be sure to hit the forums and uh, provide your feedback on... I'm just going to go in there and throw them all my blog post links. Like, I was right? just going to say that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I imagine half of the people... Well, I don't know. The CDI has actually filtered out a lot, whereas the trolls, the trolls don't show up anymore, or not as much. It's the people who at least, try, really at least try to parse their feedback into something constructive. They may not know what the mm -hmm. hell they're talking about, but they definitely at least try and are interested in being involved, and that is a good thing. Yep. So, so to kind of wrap up the show tonight, uh, we have a few things in our community corner to talk about. Uh, <laughs> first and foremost, it's community corner. No, it's Cast Cast, the podcast it's... about podcast and the style I'm... of the podcast. I'm not even gonna. Try. You're not Kate. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the same. <laughs> Cast, cast, the podcast, cast, the style, of the podcast, and the other podcast of the cast with the cast with the cast, 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 cast. something yeah. like that. Yeah. So uh, someone on Reddit Reddit. made a uh, made a post about the undocumented elementalist buff, and uh, they were talking about <laughs> being able to summon the fiery gray sword underwater, but of course you can't pick it up and you can't use it. So they said can, it's working. Can anyone else? Can working anyone else pick it up? Still, nope. Working is intended. It's still a buff. Working is intended. It's still a buff. It's, yep, a it's, still above. it's a feature. It's a feature. It's a feature. Some some rather humorous uh, comments and stuff on that. Um, Afterlife Legions will be doing a stream on Saturday, uh, twelve fourteen. They're going to be streaming for the charity Games Aid, which is a UK-based charity supporting disadvantaged and disabled youths. So uh, if you want to check that out, I will be throwing the link in the chat. Um, also, um, Edge of the Mist streaming, um, they're yeah. going to be doing some of that. Um, they will be doing things like um, NC soft bags, gem cards, a char plushie, Mr. Sparkle codes. So if you're interested in some sweet swag or want to support charity, by all means, go check them out. Then uh, also, Commander Duke Witherheart's Rampage from Rada Sum is going to be going. It's going to be a massive PvE zerg that he's planning to roll literally everyone and everything they can, all the way from Radisum to Harathi, uh, Saturday at 5 GMT on Gunnar's Hold, which is a uh, UC, or a EU server. So even if you don't want, even if you can't participate and you're in the U.S., you're more than welcome to join their uh, team speak if you want to listen in. Kate is also planning on streaming the event, and she will be there Saturday afternoon. So, is there anything else that uh, we need to discuss? I guess it would help if I put the, the right community link. poll. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So Reddit also has a uh, community poll that they are doing. Um, favorite living story. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I don't super know why adventure box. Me. Super adventure box. Can, can we just point out how incredibly far ahead Bizarre the Four Winds is? It's yeah. at forty three percent. It's, it's of not everything. even close. Yeah. Super <laughs> like, is Super Adventure Box even in the list of applicants? It's in second. It's, yes. It's our last it's in second. second. At eleven percent. Must yeah. plus up all of the boxes. Actually, the I was pro actually. It's it's not part of the story story. That's probably why Bizarre is winning. Well, it, yeah. The thing is that like when I was thinking back on it for my own answer, it was like when when that came out. That was the most overjoyed I was at an update that they have done. It like, was a really good. That was update. the one that I was that just place like, was, I was giddy and that place I was loved it. Really damn gorgeous. And it was and so they, different. And it was phenomenal with its design. 
and it was great. And so, so for me, that's the one that actually won my vote. But in but again, it was kind of an April Fool's gag, so it doesn't it kind of doesn't count. So if we're talking about everything else, then the Zephyr Sanctum is by far and away the best because yep. that zone mm-hmm. is gorgeous. The movement skills were incredibly fun and and creative. The Sanctum mini-game Sprint was really fun. Yeah, Sanctum Sprint was Sanctum incredibly Sprint is fun. really good. Like the the skins were pretty cool. Like you can still they're yeah. still they're expensive. Oh yeah, those now. back pieces are um, fantastic. Yeah, it was. I mean, it had just about everything, and and not to mention it included the voting thing. Which you know, I mean, gimmick or not, yeah. interesting. So yeah, I mean, as far as like real living story yeah. goes, and the I pacing like was is... good too. The pa- and yeah, the pacing was good. Yeah, it was for sure. Yeah, yeah. So as far as if, if you know, if we're talking about what do we want to see more of, I think that's the clear winner. You know, like Super Adventure it was, Box. It was a new zone. Yeah, that Super was Adventure Box. Exactly. Yeah. Like nostalgia and that right that... there is telling. That eventually disappeared, but yeah. truth truth be told, it was a new zone. Yep. So. Well, well I think key point, was, it was a new zone with stuff in it. It was gorgeous. Max out sun. <laughs> it was gorgeous. So. All right, well, I think that will about wrap us up for today. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thanks, chat room, for listening to our ramblings. I uh, also want to thank all the co-hosts. Evie, thanks so much for being here. Grybok, thanks for supporting Mass Effect. And, Don't uh, get me started on the end, though. I, I was uh, listening to one of your, I was listening to one of the other podcasts, and I was like, "Oh man, after show." That's, that's a good thing. It, I was, yeah. It's going on after show. Um, and of course, Malkior, thanks for coming out as well. Always glad to be here. And I am Wash signing off. We will see you all later. And for those in the chat room, stick around. We'll be starting the after show here in just a few moments. See you later. Come to our website. Do that. Oh yeah, I guess I should plug some things, huh? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm so bad about that. I They're already like, playing the outro music here. Right? You know what's what. Yeah. So visit us daily, relicsofwar.com. Um, follow us on Twitter, Relics of War. Um, Facebook page, Google Plus. Email us, Relics of War at, twi- at gmail.com. Did I miss anything? We seriously got to put those in the show notes. I'm so bad about that. Oh, oh, that will oh. say goodbye. No, I've got no, no, no. Wait, this might be important. Okay. Uh, holiday schedule. Oh yeah, so we will be not doing a show, correct, on Christmas Eve. Good. Or next yeah. week? Are we doing one next week? I don't know, Mr. Producer. Are we doing I a show on the be... Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bye. The boss has spoken. Get out.